Again, we're trying to solve for omega final. What would be our next uh, step in simplifying this equation? Um, cons this, you add the uh, 625 plus the 12.5. I agree with that. So what does that give us as our new equation? Uh, 19.5, uh, 19... I think you might have typed that into your calculator wrong. Try that again. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, 18.75. Good. So what's our new equation? 18.75 uh, omega final squared. Right. All right, things are getting simpler. Now what? Um, divide 33.2 by the 18.75. Yeah, we're dividing both sides by 18.75. So let me know what you get there. 1.777. Okay, good. So let's call that just uh, 1.8 uh, for simplicity. So we get... And then what? Take the square root and get 1.33. Okay, so you can see this type of problem takes practice. So you uh, can get uh, comfortable with all the algebraic steps without making careless mistakes. All right, so omega is 1.3. All right, that's a lot of work. It would be easy kind of to have lost track of what our goal was here or what the question was. Uh, can you see what do we need to do now to finish off the problem? We need to find the velocity, but mm -hmm. we're given the, um, that we just figured out the angular velocity. That's right. So this would be in radians per second. That's true. Good point. Um, so, but we're looking, does that mean uh, we're looking for the, we're looking for the translational mm -hmm. final velocity. Right. So, um, so what do we know? We know. We know uh, we, we, our special formula? There you go. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now we use our special formula. Good. Okay. So um, what, is that, uh, what calculation do we do then, then? Or what, what, what happens when we use that formula? What do we get? Um, oh, I was plugging. So what we would say um, R, which is going to be 5M, or just 5, um, times our 1.33. Right. If you take a look at my whiteboard, we already used that formula, right? We'd already said that V final oh. is 5 times omega final. We used that to plug in, right? We'd already mm -hmm. plugged that in over here, and now we can use it to find what V final is. All right, so that would be 5 times 1.3. And what do we get for that? 6.66 uh, meters per second. Okay, you're uh, rounding off a little less than me. Okay, that's fine. So that comes out to be about 6.7 or 6.67, something like that, depending mm -hmm. on how much you round off. Good. What did the, uh, so what's our answer to the problem? 6.67 meters per second. Good. Okay. All right. All right. So there was a, a fair amount uh, of work in that type of problem. As usual, you definitely want to um, go back and go through uh, each of those uh, steps again. Uh, let's see here. So to review, first of all, remember that your first instinct was to use Newton's second law. You could have solved this using Newton's second law, but it was better to use conservation of energy. And again, we talked about when is conservation of energy a good approach? What's well, particularly good when there's questions about speed and um, distance. Well, this is a problem that's asking us for the final speed. So that was a clue that conservation of energy um, would be a good approach. And we only have one object. So this is probably not a momentum problem. Momentum usually deals with more than one object. So we wrote down our general formula, and then we started plugging in. Um, and we looked for things that were zero. Uh, we started at rest, so the kinetic energies initially were zero, and we ended at the bottom, so the final gravitational energy was zero. Uh, one thing that I think would really discourage a lot of students here is that I didn't tell you the mass, right? Notice how this problem didn't tell you the mass, but it would be important not to be discouraged by that because eventually the mass terms canceled out, right? 
Um, so keep in mind, sometimes you might see a problem where you're not given information that it seems like you need. Well, then you just use a variable for that, and maybe eventually that variable will cancel out. Um, and in order for that to cancel out, we had to be able to plug in for i. Uh, remember that here they, we were told the shape of the object. It was a solid cylinder, so we have to use the table in the book to find i. Uh, and that was what allowed us to put an m term in here. Remember, you can only cancel the m when the m appears in every single term. So once we plugged in for i, we had m in every single term. All right, and then when we got down to this point, this equation, we still had a difficulty because there were still two unknowns, v and omega, and here we used uh, that special formula, v equals r times omega, where r was the radius of the object. Um, and we could have plugged in for either v or omega, but if we plug in for omega, we'd have to plug in a, a, a kind of a fraction. So we were probably better off plugging in v equals r times omega, or here v equals 5 times omega, and that gave us this parenthesis over here. All right, and then it was basically uh, algebra to uh, work through uh, the remainder of the problem. Do you have any questions about that? No, appreciate it, Corey. Okay. All right, well, uh, that's about an hour. Uh, if you want to, we can work through question 85 together, or if you want, we can stop now, or uh, whatever. Um, just looking at number 85, I mean, what... Um Maybe you can kind of talk me through how you'd attack it if you want. So what how you do plane I mean it's pretty much gonna be just almost the same way of solving it, right? That we just did. It's similar. In some ways it's similar, in some ways it's different. Every problem's a little bit different. It's the same basic right. approach. W what are the differences? Um the um I was given the um angular speed mm -hmm. and um, I mean that's the only difference and then, so, mm -hmm. so that's and, then mm -hmm. and then all I got my my initial my final will be zero because that's very important that's good how do you know that the, that the final what will be zero the final velocity will be zero because it yeah. comes to a rest that's right. How do you know it's going to come to a rest? Oh, well, they actually specifically told you, didn't they? Okay. So that, that's right. So they specifically told us it was going to come to rest. So that's important. So that would give us that final velocity of zero. That's right. All right. Very good. By the way, did you get my email with the attachment? Yes, I have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were able to print that out? Yes. All right. So you, can you see that actually covers a lot of the ideas that we talked about today? Uh, yeah. For example, at the bottom, uh, it has the conservation of energy ideas, right? And uh, at the top, it has a bunch of the analogies. Uh, and it, uh, there's, a, there's also a page on, uh, ki uh, on kinematics. So that would be a good thing um, to obviously use when you're doing problems. But also, that would be a good thing um, just to kind of sit and meditate on for 10 minutes. What, one of the problems in the, in the physics class is that every week, you kind of get hit with 5 or 10 or 20 new concepts. Uh, and they can all start to get confused in the student's mind. So the purpose of that handout is to kind of all have all those concepts kind of set out as clearly as possible so you can just kind of sit and stare and think about them for a while and just try to get a feel for how, what, what, what the equations are that relate the different concepts uh, to each other. So if you just have a, a second just to, just to look and think about that for a while, that can help you to, uh, to see how all the different concepts relate to each other. Because I know oftentimes when people are taking notes in the middle of a tutoring session, the notes can end up being kind of messy because they're taken kind of in the heat of the moment. So hopefully um, having them more set things out more clearly can help you uh, with the ideas. Okay, so uh, don't forget to uh, redo this question and try question 85 and uh, make sure that, goes, uh, that works. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website there's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you.
Uh, one more thing that is available at my website is a document um, that I prepared uh, that uh, summarizes a lot of the concepts that are covered in uh, this video. <clears throat> A, a document that covers a lot of the concepts behind uh, rotational motion. Uh, so again, you can uh, go to my website at this address. You can just use the link in the info box. Uh, and you can find a printable, uh, a printable PDF document uh, that you can use to help you uh, in, your, your, in your studies for rotational motion.